I'm really so excited to start my Chaos Knight that I didn't even wait for the Chaos Knight army box to arrive and I've already started on one. The moment I saw the Chaos Knight Abominant shown by Games Workshop, I knew I wanted to do that weathered patina look. Watch how I'm going to do it just with washers. The Chaos Army Knight box is coming so soon and if you are a Chaos Army Knight fan, I'm pretty pretty sure that you have already ordered your very own box of the Chaos Knight Army box. I'm so sure of it. I myself have got an old copy of the Chaos Knight lying around in the studio and I thought why should I have to wait for the Army Knight box to start on my own Chaos Knight. So we've all seen the Avia Metal Team version of the Chaos Knight Abominant with the weathered patina look on the armor panel. And it looks so amazing. But on further thought, it's honestly really simple to do. Honestly, I've got to give it to the Avia Metal Design Team because it's so simple to do but it's so eye-catching. The best part is, if you want to achieve the very same effect for yourself, the fact is, you will only need to do it by washers. That's right, you heard it right. Washers. What? I can achieve this through washers? Yeah, you can. Wow. Stay on and find out how I'm going to do it. So right here over a very shiny gloss black, I'm doing a very desaturated gold tone, which is a lacquer paint. Of course, if you don't have an airbrush, use a spray can. Of course, we have to achieve a brass surface so that we can work our patina on. Right here on the gloss black surface, I'm going to be painting on some gold using the airbrush. If you don't have an airbrush, that's okay too. You can always use the spray can and get some retributor gold. Or you can always very tediously hand brush it on thin layers at a time. That's all. Now that the airbrushing stage is complete, we can move on to creating the patina on our gold surface that we have created using the airbrush or the spray can. Before you jump on to the painting segment, let me explain some theory that will really help you in the next stage. First off, we need to understand that paint is made up of three simple things. Pigment, binder, and solvent, as you can see right here. Firstly, the pigment is the one that gives the paint its color. The binder is the material that allows the paint to adhere onto the surface. And lastly, the solvent allows the paint to remain liquid or at least as a paste. These three things have to work together in order for the paint to work. So what we are going to do by diluting the paint down is we are going to break down the components of paint by totally rendering the binder inconsequential. What do I mean by that? Because we are going to add in so much water into the paint that the binder is not able to keep the pigment together. And what happens next? This allows us to create water stains. And these water stains is what we are going to be using to create the patina look on our armor panel. Alright, before we start sloshing some paint onto the model, I'm going to be using these colors right here. Wow. Get all these colors ready. Or if you don't have these AK colors, get these GW colors ready. And let's get sloshing some paint on and creating this awesome looking patina. So this is a very very thinned down version of the paint. And the role is to take away the binder. As you can see, just a little bit at a time, thin layers at a time. Let's do it again and again. So for this stage, I'm thinning down the paint a little bit more than usual because I want the watermarks to look a little bit more obvious. Also, I'm doing it in blotches as you can see right here. All these blotches, just leave it onto the model, let it dry and after many layers of build up, you're gonna get a really attractive looking water stained patina look. So this is after the first layer is dried, you can see that there is some water stains you really want to just keep building a little bit and a little bit and remember always do it in blotches because when the paint dries the central blotch will actually form very nice tight marks and these tight marks are the things that actually give the patina its finish and weathered look right here just blotching 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 Now I'm creating more concentrated patches here. I'm using AK Gen 3 Turquoise. This time round, I'm still doing the blotching. Always remember what we have talked about in the previous steps. Alright, so what I want you guys to notice right here now is that I'm a little bit more selective in my placement, focusing on the spikes and the lower trim where water can be collected. That's why the composition is really important and the consistency of the paint. I didn't thin it as much, so the water stains aren't as obvious as the previous stage. 
So for this stage, I'm going to uniformly apply dark green grey on the entire armour panel. At this stage, the paint isn't really thinned down that much because I want to create a uniform glaze over the entire panel and this helps to unify the entire colour scheme. This stage is going to be all over to bind all the stages together. Don't worry, you can always do it in blotches. However, I'm doing it in bigger patches so that this looks more unified in the end. So right here, I'm going to be sort of like just shading down the reverts and all the other details. This time round, you just want to focus the pin only on the gold untarnished details. So these areas are going to be a little bit more pronounced with the contrast pin going to the shades. I've used Gulliman Flash because this is a nice reddish orange tone and this goes really well with the very cold, desaturated coat that we have created with the airbrush stage. Now for this final stage, I'm going to be focusing on using pastel green. It's the most high value and the most eye-catching, so you want to do this really sparingly. I'm only going to focus this on the areas that are most prone to corrosion, which is where the water is going to collect, near the spikes and stuff like that. Areas that I want to be highlighting on the armor panel. Pastel green is a really strong color and tends to be very opaque, so my recommendation is to do this in very thin coats and do this very sparingly. You don't want this pastel green to outdo all the hard work that you have done before. Alright guys, so now I've broken down everything color by color. Let's watch the entire process in its entirety for the top carapace so that I can give you guys even more tips on painting this weathered patina look. So here's a time-lapse version of the entire painting process. I find that this is going to be really useful because you're going to see multiple layers drying and you're definitely going to be convinced with this as a painting technique. Don't worry, just follow the process. I'd like to give you guys an additional tip while watching me paint this carapace. Remember, you've got to do this in blotches, that's really important. But what's even more important than the blotches is that you've got to allow it to dry in layers. You can have one simple blotch, hair dryer, lay it dry first, and then go on layer by layer. Thin layers at a time will create very complex water stains, which will make the patina look even more convincing. So remember, you just want to build it up in very very thin layers. This is my second to third layer and you can see the colours is really really building up. I admit, putting on a lot of washers onto the model is really really fun. But something that I have to emphasise is the concept of less is more. You got to decide when is enough and just call it a day. Don't overdo this process and I promise you that you can create a very realistic looking patina. Can you believe it? This was done entirely using just washers. I'm really amazed with this and yeah, Games Workshop has pulled it out of the bag and created a very eye-catching result just with using washers. So I hope you can give this a try for yourself too. So I hope you found this tutorial useful and the moment that you get your hands on the Chaos Army box set, you can get going with your Chaos Knight Abominant as soon as possible. So you must be really interested to paint Chaos Knights. So why not click this video right here where I show you guys how to paint an entire Chaos Knight without metallic paints and without an airbrush.